Um, well, um, typically we use, as Carl mentioned in the presentation, we use phosphate. Um, you know, anything that, that um, you know, in the absorption solution or anything that might not enter the gas phase can be used, but um, uh, or phosphate is what we normally use as an internal standard. Well, we used um, um, a, a very a high purity uh, carb or a clean carbon, you know, a specially packaged uh, cartridge, if you will. Um, it was, um, um, and it's described in the application note, um, it was um, uh, activated carbon AOX pack premium, um, and it was available from an um, 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 yes, you can. You can use the um, whatever extract off of the cartridges, and then in that case, though, you would use the liquids auto sampler and um, go ahead and just uh, inject a given aliquot of that. Um, I'm not sure about the disadvantages of that, uh, but uh, certainly, um, you know, it can be done, and customers are doing that. Excellent. So you have to correct your organic fluorine concentration by subtracting inorganic fluoride? Yes, and so that's why it's it's nice to be able to in analyze the water uh, sample directly prior to any adsorption across the carbon. Um, yeah, you know, again, that's all part of your breakthrough studies. We we typically use a flow rate of about three mils per minute, uh, but um, certainly you you don't want to uh, uh, go too fast. The slower, the better. Yeah, I guess I'll I'll take that one. Um, there currently aren't any standard ones that have been fully approved. There are, at least as far as I'm aware, there is one that the uh, ASCM is looking at. It's in draft form, so it's with, with one of the, um, the work groups, working groups, and it's been progressing along. It's, it's not quite there yet. There's also a DIN method that is available in draft form, for, um, and that one's more specifically for AOX, but a lot of what's uh, done there can be used for, for looking at AOF uh, specifically also. So there are some in the works. And I believe the EPA is looking at um, developing a method themselves. So there's, a, there's quite a bit of work happening on, on creating standards for this particular method. I guess, I guess I'll take that one, um, Kirk. Uh, so if, uh, actually, if you look at the uh, customer application note, the, the 73481, it does go into quite a bit of detail about that. And it looks at recoveries. Uh, it, it looks at 26 different compounds, and about 18 of the 26 do have a recovery of, that's between 60 and 120 uh, percent. What, what was found by, by the researchers who, who did this work is that uh, things that weren't retained were things like uh, perfluorinated C1 and C3 carboxylic and sulfonic acids. So, you know, the majority of them are being captured, but there are definitely going to be some that, that are not going to be adsorbed to the material. So this method, it generates something more of a, uh, a cumulative parameter and that, that will give you, I think, a better indication of the potential contamination present in, in unknown samples than, than just using LCMS-MS alone because LCMS-MS is, is going, to be, um, going to be specific, specifically looking at individual compounds that you have to have standards, et cetera, for. Um, so this will give you a, an, an approximation of, of what's there, but it's not totally comprehensive, totally exhaustive of, as far as capturing everything. Um, no, that would be, um, it would be in addition to the IC, um, or, or well, it, 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 I guess, yes, the, the injection valve that we use uh, for the large loop uh, is integrated onto the uh, IC system. It would just uh, require an extra pump, a carrier pump, if you will, um, and a, a, an associated trap column on that carrier pump. 